Hello and welcome on in everybody. Good to see you. My name is Sam Peterson and I'm your host for today's Photoshop challenge. And today we're doing a surreal TV screen scene, kind of where we're making a scene pop out of the TV, doing some surreal compositing. Um, and uh, we'll jump into that in just a sec. But I just want to say hey to everyone in the chat. What's going on, RB? Good to see you. Susan, Afrosia, Robert, uh, we got our uh, moderator way to cuff in the chat as well. What's going on, Tim? Good to see everybody. So there's a lot to get through today. Um, this is a pretty heavy compositing challenge. Uh, this is also our last challenge of the set. So we're going all out on this, uh, but this is our image here. If you want to follow along with this same file, you can download the starter file from the description below. This way you can just kind of follow step by step with what I'm doing. And as always, you're welcome to kind of take this challenge and uh, take it your own direction um, if you're comfortable in doing that. So this is the sort of effect that we're creating here. Let me move myself over to the right so you can see it better. We got this living room scene and then uh, kind of uh, just adding this whole, you know, elements of the scene spilling out into the living room. So let's get started. Uh, first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom into the TV and we just wanna mask out the screen of the TV. So I'm gonna use the elliptical marquee tool, or sorry, the rectangular uh, marquee tool here. And I'm just gonna select this right along those borders. What I'm gonna do is I want to mask out everything or I wanna mask out this TV screen. I don't wanna maintain it. So whatever you're selecting, you're gonna keep. So I'm just gonna do Control or Command Shift I to invert that selection and mask it out. So this way we have a little hole in the TV. I'm gonna go into my asset folder. We have a lot of assets for this. Uh, hopefully we can get through all of these, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is our main scene here. So I'm gonna duplicate that with Control or Command J and just drag it down under the TV and then hide my asset folder. I'm gonna keep pulling things out of there. I like to make duplicates just so I have a, a backup if need be. Uh, I'm gonna right click our, our waterfall image and create a smart object, convert to smart object rather. This way I can just scale it around, I can scale it up, I can scale it down, and um, I don't have to worry about losing resolution if I wanna change it after the fact. So I'm gonna kinda of do it so this straight edge of the waterfall is in the frame. And I, I still want that waterfall in the background to show, so something like around here uh, might work pretty well. I want a little space for the waterfall down at the bottom. So I think that works pretty well. I'll press uh, enter to confirm that change. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll go from there. And what I wanna do next is I wanna create a foreground element in this scene. So we're gonna have a waterfall spilling out in front of the TV, but it would be covered by this foreground. Um, so let's go ahead and duplicate our foreground. Let's select our whole you know, main scene with the living room. And what I wanna do here is see what we can do with the object selection tool. I'm gonna to click and hold to have the window drop down with the magic wand tool. Select like selection or any of those hotkeys to cycle between the tools in that little folder. Uh, but it looks like if you have Object Finder checked on at the very top, you'll see that it kind of identifies objects. So it got the couch, so let's just click that. And let's see if it finds anything else we need. No, so I'll try um, Shift and then circling the things that I want, maybe like these couch cushions. And that's pretty good. Um, I also want this table. So I might try just like circling this whole table, not including those little beakers. Didn't get this. And from here, you could basically just go through, use whatever selection tools you want to clean it up. So I might grab the magic wand tool, hold on alter option to negate the selection and click that black area. Now I realize I have contiguous unchecked. I should check that. And that way it'll just grab the area connected to that. Contigu Contiguous being unchecked makes it so any tone of that scene or of that color in the entire scene, uh, it'll grab. So I could try like grabbing this red with the magic wand tool. I don't know if any of you guys use the magic wand tool. I still use it quite a bit. I think it's because it uh, has a place in my art process um, and I kind of transfer it over. So from here, you can use things like the quick selection tool, try to grab these beakers. 
Um, since this whole area is kind of the same color, magic wand tools, not, not bad for some of these sections. So when you're done with that and you've selected everything you want, you know, take some time with this. Uh, I would mask this out. Or actually what I would do is probably um, make a duplicate of this. And we could do control J, you know, get this on a duplicate. It's probably good to, uh, I should have told you to duplicate the background first so we can just mask it out and we can always push and pull that mask. But you should have this on a new layer as a foreground image. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this one. I spent a little bit more time off stream creating this um because this this mask does take a little while to get correct so spend as long or as little time on you on it as you want if you want to practice your masking and get this to be a clean design i'd recommend it but i'll have this on my own layer and i'll just name this foreground so now we have this little element here that's going to come in handy later uh what's going on annika good to see you welcome on in uh anyone who's just popping in this chat welcome on in good to see you all Valentina, hello, hello. Carol, what's going on, everybody? All right, so now um, what we want to do is we want to create this waterfall effect. So let's do that. And um, what I want to do is I want to grab like my main waterfall image. We're going to be working with two waterfall images here. And one of them is kind of the main one, which is this. And then this is the secondary one. So it's we're going to essentially be blending these together and I'll show you how that's going to work. So I'm going to hide my asset folder and what I'm going to do um, with this waterfall image is I might actually just grab the center. I don't want to have to deal with masking too much of this control C control V and I can just delete that, put it to a new layer. I can just delete the original. I just want to work with the section that we need. So now I'll mask this and I can paint with black. Black conceals, white reveals. So you can always bring it back with white. And I'm using a large soft round brush, basically the default soft round uh, airbrush in Photoshop. And I'm just going to kind of paint around the edges here, mask it out with the brush tool. I'm using a fairly large brush tool on purpose. I want, I'm going to be doing a lot of blending with these, these waterfalls. I don't really want a hard edge or it's going to look a little off. So I'm purposely using a fairly large brush. Uh, when I get to the top, I want that to be a bit tighter. I'm not really blending it on the top as much as the sides. So I might use like a slightly tighter um, mask there. And when I say tighter, I just mean smaller brush. Mask out this area at the bottom. That looks pretty good. So this is kind of a you know quick and messy process. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, <clears throat> I should have made that a smart object to begin with. Uh, but let's just make it a smart object now. We can always go into this smart object and adjust the masking if need be. So I'm going to position this. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want... I'm going to mask it out. I'm going to create a new mask. I don't want this dark area. I think I just want to leave that alone. So I'm going to mask out that dark area of the waterfall. I think that's going to give us issues. It doesn't look great. So we'll adjust it like that. And see how that looks. So from here, I'm just going to roughly position it in. Press enter. And uh, I'm actually just going to duplicate this with controller command J, bring it to the other side. And we're essentially going to fill this whole area in with this waterfall, but it's going to look a bit repetitive, but we'll fix that. So I'm going to go to edit, transform, horizontal, flip horizontal rather, put that on the right side. And essentially what I want to do from here is just controller command J, move it into place, get some coverage. We'll get the original on the right side, controller command J and use the move tool. Hotkey is the V, by the way, to kind of shift that into place. Um, I could do this with another one. We could even stretch this one out horizontally. I'm holding on shift and dragging. And I'm just trying to fill this in. And uh, I can go to edit, transform, warp. You know, this is really just a texture that we're using. 
Oh, okay. It's uh, we might want to just let's see. I think that was because of uh, being a smart object, linked to layer masks. Yeah. So well, let's just rasterize this. We'll apply this layer mask here. Uh, oh, I think we can't because let me see here. Let's do rasterize layer and then apply layer mask. And then we can warp that into place. So again, edit, transform, warp. Um, I just have it on a hotkey because I use warp all the time in my workflow. I think that's good enough. So that's fine for our purposes. Um, what we can do since we have like five of these layers now is we can just shift select them all. I'm sorry, I'm in the way um, of the layers panel. Hopefully you guys can see that better now. I'm going to shift select all these five layers that we've created and do control and command G. We'll leave that as group one. So now what I want to do is um, I want to go and grab my other waterfall. So I'm going into my asset folder. And we'll grab this one, we'll make a duplicate with controller command J and drag that down into our working space. I'm going to hide the asset folder so that doesn't get in our way. And now we can play around with this. So once again, I'm just going to take like the elliptical marquee tool. I keep saying elliptical, I'm sorry, rectangular marquee tool. And i um, just going to select the general area and click the mask button at the bottom of the layers panel here. So what I want to do is take this and I'm just gonna kind of mask it out with a large round brush like we did with the last one. And we're gonna essentially use this second waterfall to blend into the textures of the first one so we don't have this kind of repetitive look. You can sort of blend them the two groups together. We'll be masking the two groups and get more of a, a natural look. So let's see how that goes. All right. Once again, I should have made this a smart object before masking. Keep getting that backwards. Uh, but we can always do right click, convert to smart object. And again, if you want to edit this after the fact, just double click the smart layer and you'll see that the mask is there. If you make edits to this, just save it and that save will reflect in this. So what I'm noticing right now is that this looks pretty good, but the color isn't quite right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do image adjustments and we don't need an adjustment layer because this is a smart object. It'll save it. So we can do uh, levels and we can adjust the levels a bit. I want to make this brighter. So I'm going to grab this right slider for the brights, and crank it up a bit. Um, I don't like how it's blowing out the bright brights. So I may not go too crazy with that. I may ease that down a bit around like maybe 220 and bump up the mid-tones a bit, which is going to make those darker tones a bit brighter, which I think is going to be really helpful. So we could do like 1.5 or so. That looks pretty good to me. Maybe even brighter, 1.67. I could even boost the darks a bit if I really wanted. Maybe I'll boost them like 9 or so. Looks pretty good to me, just until it matches. And if you're hovering over it, it's going to be kind of easier to tell. Um, so what I might do from here is just the same thing we did before. Control or Command J to duplicate it. I'm going to move this to the other side. And I kind of want it to flow out to the sides. So when I put them on the right side, I flip it so that they're facing that sort of direction. And the, the waterfalls on the right will kind of be flowing to the right since this isn't perfectly straight. And I'm just going to create like a wall of these. Duplicate this again. And duplicate Actually, we'll duplicate the original um, again, so we don't have to flip it. And if you need to, make a mask on these and blend them out a bit, but we're gonna mostly be blending these two groups. So I'm selecting this individual piece here. It's hard to see with all the other ones, but I added a mask on, and if any of these edges look too, too sharp, um, I can always just go through and blend that a little bit. So I'm just doing this very, kind of lightly. And what I want to do here is I want to group all these. Uh, we got four of these. You can just put two. It's We're really just trying to break up the pattern. So controller command G for group. So we got group two of waterfalls and group one. 
And essentially what I want, I think I want my main one to be group one. I do like it, but I don't like how these strong areas of the white uh, water are kind of being a recognizable pattern. So what I'm going to go do is create a group or um, a mask on each group. And I can just push and pull them and blend these two textures together, essentially. I'm going to want to do that at the top, but we'll come back to that. Um, but I can kind of toggle this on and off. And if there's like any areas I want to maintain, I can do that. I think it looks, this group in particular, I think looks pretty good at the top. Because it has these small streams that look like they're, you know, these small streams that look like they're coming right off the edge. So I do like that about it. But I might want to just... You know, kind of blend it in a way that is going to break up the texture a bit more. Just so it doesn't look repetitive. You can always do white to push it or to bring it back if I feel like I went too far. And I think that doesn't look terrible. Um, so I'm going to mask out the top a bit where it meets. Let's do this one at a time. So this is our original group. This is group one. And I just want to use a soft round brush to kind of blend the top here. Don't go too far, you'll hit the bottom of the TV. Um, but just so that like lip is is working. And you may need to spend a little time on this to kind of get that blend looking natural. But we could try it with the, see what group two looks like. I think group two is fairly well blended. Um, but yeah, this uh, this, you can just push and pull, you know, as much as you want. So I'm going to leave it for the sake of time because we got a lot to do. I think that blend could be a bit, a bit smoother, but we'll leave it for now. So make sure to save that uh, control S is on muscle memory. And let's see, where are we? So we got the second. Um, yeah, let's go from here. So what I want to do is add to this a little bit more. Now, one thing I did like about this group I'm holding on shift to squish it is it did have this kind of mist, but we sort of lost that um, effect when we put this together, when we masked it out, there wasn't a lot of it. So let's make our own. I'm going to do controller command shift N for a new layer. We'll call this mist and uh, we'll just leave it a normal blending mode. So if you could use a soft round brush, I'm just using white. I have white selected. And you could just kind of use a low flow if you're using a mouse, take this down to maybe like 20, 30, 40. Um, and you can just sort of dab down here to create this sort of foggy mist effect. Now I have a brush that I really like. I mean, this one works great, but I have one that I like called a cloud brush. And um, let, me, let me pop Discord up real quick for you so I can, so I can mention this. Uh, let's bring you in here. If you go into the Photoshop Discord, you can actually type in Sam's Brushes, apostrophe S, and I posted a couple days ago my brush set. So you'll see this post that says, here's my brush set. You can click it and get the link to download. Um, and that will allow you to have the same brush. I've used a couple brushes with these challenges, so if you want them all, that's where you can find them. But I have this cloud brush that has a pretty cool texture. I like it for fog, smoke, clouds, anything like that. So I might, you know, play with that at the bottom a bit too. But if you don't have this and you don't want to use it, the um, the soft round brush works great. So that's kind of a cool effect. I might want to do a mist and type sides just to separate this a bit. But what I could do here is try to make the sides a bit more sort of foggy. And I'm going to fill this in really densely and I'll show you why in a second. We're going to ease off of it. But I just want to sort of like create this mist from the sides pouring out. So it's not such a hard edge. I think it looks a bit better. It's a little bit softer. So this is way overboard. I mean, you can do this if you want. It does look kind of cool. But I'm going to create a mask on this mist sides. And this way, I like the positioning of it as it is now. But I can just kind of push and pull with the soft brush to ease off wherever I want. So we're really blending two textures of waterfalls and then creating our own uh, with the mist brush. So I can see, did I go too far? You know, I could always ease off the opacity too. Um, 
but maybe we'll keep this fairly fairly heavy all right so i'll leave it right there that looks pretty cool love the cloud brush yeah i use it a lot so it's definitely a fun one. What's going on, Bernie? Good to see you. Uma Corrin, welcome on in, everyone. Uh, Jack, not sure if I said hey to you. How's it going, Jack? So what I want to do is we, we have a few minutes left. Essentially, we're just trying to make scenes from the image come out on into the living room. So I have these other assets. Uh, we got this parrot asset. Let's um, duplicate that, drag that out of our asset folder. And of course, with the uh, the waterfall, make sure the foreground image is in the front. That's why we have this. Um, otherwise, you know, the effect's going to look a little weird, but that's why we have the separate layer in front of the waterfall. So we got parrots here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this like three times. I think I want three of these parrots. So I'm going to mask out each one. I'm going to select one of these layers and grab an object selection on the top left so it is searching. And sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it has a little trouble. But we can just click one of these parrots. That uh, looks pretty good. I'm actually fairly impressed with that. Um, I don't need this little bit of green that it took. I do want that. Okay, it was too small. And uh, from here, we could always just go in with like the quick selection tool, you know, clean up these, or, or manual selection tools. I'm going to keep this pretty quick and messy for the sake of time, but... Whenever I'm doing manual cleanup, uh, typically I just use like the lasso tool. Lasso tool and me go way back. Best of friends. Missing his little tail. Because the background is fairly in focus and it's um it's so heavily textured, some of these tools have a bit of trouble with this particular image. If the background was out of focus, it would probably be a lot easier. So yeah, this won't always be the case. It just depends on your image. Mask that out. Now we got one bird. So I'm going to do that a couple more times really quick. Uh, we have two duplicates. I might want... If we're running out of time, I might just do one more here. Actually, let's, let's see what the object finder can do. That's not too bad. Um, I'm going to use my lasso tool to modify that selection just in between here. And again, since we're masking these, you know, we can always go back, do a better job. As always, you know, spend as much time as you want. If you want to really practice masking, you can spend some time on that. If you really just want to get to the other techniques, you can just let the auto features do what they do. It looks like it missed his beak. And uh, let's mask that. All right, so I think we're we're running a little bit out of time. I want to go over one more technique. So I'll just leave these two birds. I wanted three. Three is always a good number. Um, let's see here. So we could kind of put them breaking the frame here. Also, if we right click these and do convert to smart object for each one, we can scale them a bit more. So maybe I'll have one like kind of in the scene here in the background. The thing is we don't really have the same lighting on these birds. The lighting seems a bit off. So what I would recommend is creating a levels adjustment layer. But I do want to jump into the last little stage of this, which is maybe taking the original scene and fitting that into the foreground a bit. And we'll see if we can do that. And I just want you to, I just want to point out that these are all various different compositing techniques. Um, there's not really a central technique for this challenge like there are for a lot of them, but I'm hoping that you get kind of some different tools and methods for this. So what I want to do is I want to go into select color range and select my foreground leaves. Now, if you have the selection preview, uh, by default, I think this is what it's at. Sometimes I like just to put it at none and I can select this green leaf and you can see it in the small little preview. I'm going to go to the eyedropper with the plus and just grab basically every shade of green I can on these um, leaves. Over here, these foreground leaves, the dark tones, the light tones. We'll see. Maybe I got myself in trouble, but we can try doing OK and masking that out. So that doesn't look too bad. 
Um, what I would do from here, I'm not sure if we're going to have time. Let's make sure. Let's see. Let's just mask out. Um, see what? Oh, I still have a selection going on here. Oh, whoops, I have the wrong color selected. I was really confusing myself there. So select black to conceal, white to reveal. There we go. Uh, anyway, I confused myself there, guys, but I am pretty much out of time. So color range can actually do a lot of work. You can go in and do that after the fact. If you see any colors like here, you can clean those up as well. Uh, but what I would do, I'll show you in the Discord, but what I would do is I would select these into separate layers, put them in the corner here, and use a levels adjustment to fit it to the rest of the lighting. I am out of time, so I do have to run. I'll show you the finished image in the Discord. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll be doing a review tomorrow of all the challenges. Uh, check out the Discord if you haven't yet. I'm giving feedback all week. Thanks, everybody.